A bunch of angry kids on sugar attacked the WWE Performance Center. One of them used a block to destroy a window, but they had a second block. So they used it to break the same window instead of trying to cause more damage with all the other windows. They, they broke the same window. And why did these angry boys did it? To get into the building? No, they, they did not get into the building. They left. That that was it. That that was it. To make things worse, we heard this on Monday Night Raw. I mean, how are you gonna lead the women's locker room if you don't even have a TikTok? This hurts so bad. I'm not even using a face cam for this video. Hi, Dad. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Greatness of Raw. I'm not using a face cam. I'm just not feeling like it. I woke up at 1 p.m. So, you know, don't have a lot of time to get ready. Uh, but anyway, people, another reason is I don't really remember much of Raw. It's such a blur to me right now because I wasn't feeling very well. You know, I had one of these days when I'm kind of doubting myself, you know, whether people are still enjoying my content or maybe I just don't have it anymore. You know, that type of stuff. Uh, hopefully you guys are still enjoying my content. That's that's all I got to say, honestly. And again, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton stole the show again. But we also got a very cool opening. So we got Samoa Joe in the ring and he hypes up, you know, the SummerSlam match between uh, Dominic Mysterio and Seth Rollins. And basically, in this segment, Dominic Mysterio has to sign two contracts. The match contract and the WWE contract. So we got Dominic Mysterio, we got Seth Rollins. And you know, it was just Seth Rollins being delusional. You should thank me for being a WWE superstar because all of it happened because of me. They signed contracts, Dominic Mysterio is officially a WWE superstar. And Seth Rollins told him to get out of the ring because he has a match against Humberto Carrillo next. So we got Seth Rollins versus Humberto Carrillo, a decent match. But every time I see Humberto Carrillo in a match, not only do I, th I know he's going to lose, sometimes I think he's gonna lose twice in a singles match. Because if it's possible to anyone, it's to Humberto Carrillo. So we got that match, of course, Seth Rollins won. And we got this big brawl in which, of course, uh, Dominic Mysterio, by the way, came with a kendo stick, but, well, that was a big mistake because they beat the living crap out of Dominic Mysterio with that kendo stick, and it looked absolutely brutal. It was basically a welcome to WWE, you know, segment, attack, whatever you want to call it. And again, that was another highlight of the show. The beginning and the end, everything else was just kind of mad to me, you know? Didn't really like it that much. But this was, man, this was brutal. I'm actually going to put it in black and white because I don't know if YouTube is gonna, you know, demonetize the video because of this. It'd be like that sometimes right here. Uh, but yeah, that was awesome and I cannot wait to see the match. We got Andrade vs. Angelo Dawkins, in which Angelo Dawkins won. This led to Bianca Belair vs. Elena Vega. And of course, Bianca Belair won the match. They're still accusing uh, Zelina Vega of poisoning Montez Ford. It's funny how they didn't mention the attack on Twitch, I think. I remember seeing a clip of uh, Bianca Belair attacking Zelina Vega on a live stream and somehow they didn't mention it even though that was kinda decent I guess. That's weird. And it seems like WWE are trying to, well, make Zelina Vega into a wrestler. What I mean by that is that obviously I know she's a legit wrestler, she's pretty good at it, but in the WWE she was mostly a manager. And now it seems like they're transitioning her into a wrestler and I'm all for it. We got the MVP VIP lounge. And he's basically blaming WWE production team for all the lights. It wasn't Apollo Crews who beat him. It was the lights who beat him. Apollo Crews says the only lights going out at SummerSlam will be MVP. So we got Apollo Crews versus Shelton and Benjamin, which is actually pretty decent. And you know what? I kind of hope that later Apollo Crews actually joins the faction. Anyway, Shelton Benjamin won because of some distractions. And Apollo, I'm going to take that championship. We see Retribution attacking the WWE Performance Center. Man, this faction, man, it's so bad. At first I was like, okay, maybe it has some potential, but now... It does feel like a bunch of teenagers destroying property for no reason whatsoever, just... Wow, they look like boys on sugar. That's how I'm gonna call them. Boys on sugar, angry boys on sugar. You know, it feels like they're doing it just for fun. 
they're not serious, they're shouting, screaming, and it has to be one of the worst things I've ever seen, you know? Mickey James is back and she got confronted by Natalia and Lana. Do you even have a TikTok? That was an actual line on Monday Night Raw. We got the Viking Raiders Ricochet and Cedric Alexander versus Akira Tozawa and the Ninjas, or Retribution Angry Boys on Sugar, I can't tell the difference. Uh, yeah, that was pretty pointless, yeah, Eric, Iowa, Ricochet and Cedric won, but that guy in the mask was actually our truth and he won the 24-7 championship, yeah, I guess that's okay. Peyton Royce defeated Liv Morgan and obviously Liv Morgan is blaming Ruby Riot. We got Riddick Moss in Raw Underground and it's still bad, it's, it's still like the same crap we seen last week, it's not getting better, I'm just asking what's the, why are they fighting? Like, it's fake, it's still fake, you know? Like, we all like wrestling because it's impressive. And this is just trying to make it look more real, but it's still... Okay, I I just don't get it. I don't know, maybe an unpopular opinion. I think this shit sucks. Asuka vs. Bailey was a very good match, and um, Asuka actually won. You know, Bailey tapped out, and now she's gonna face um, Sasha Banks for the championship. We got more uh, underground... It's still the same, yeah. We got China Baszler beating a lot of women, and I didn't know she's so bad at fake punching because this looked pretty sad. Yeah, not, not feeling it. At first I thought it has some potential, but it's basically the same like last week, and it's not getting any better. And we've got Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton, a pretty decent match, in which Randy Orton took the W, and then we got the highlight of the show, Randy Orton and Ric Flair. So... I'm not gonna repeat uh, the conversation, but basically Randy Orton said, I respect the hell out of you, you took me under your wing, you know, back in 2003, but I don't respect you anymore, now I realize why you did it. He said something like, I'm basically a son you never had, and that was, that was tough, Ric Flair almost cried. Um, a very emotional segment actually, very good. But Ric Flair didn't care, he just said, I'm happy to be here you know, at 70 years old, and I just want to be in the WWE, it's fun, I like to be around young guys like you, and I want to see you beating my record, my and John Cena's record. This let Randy Orton hug him Ric Flair, but then he, you know, punched him in the cajones, which was tough. And then we got a punt kick, uh, well not, yes, in kayfabe, yes, but I mean the lights went off, so he didn't really kick him. Which is good, you know, that's pretty, pretty dangerous. And then we got Drew McIntyre, and, and Drew McIntyre was angry, he, he was swearing, and this rivalry is even more personal right now. All of it is great, awesome. It does feel sometimes like WWE are wasting these moments in front of no audience. I know that's not the case, they need to produce shows, but man, I, w I wish we had fans because all of this, imagine the pop, the heat, man. Anyway, so that was the highlight of the show, the, the best moment. Uh, the show itself was not that good, but the beginning and the end, pretty good, and I cannot wait for SummerSlam. Uh, when it comes to SmackDown, though, I don't care about a single match. That's weird. Anyway, thank you for watching the video, the great one, peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>